Hi everyone, thanks for coming today. Super stoked you're here. I'm glad you're coming to check things out. Uh, this is the first video in a series of many videos I'm going to be releasing about the different features and platforms and technologies that I work with in my day-to-day -day and over the years and, and the tips and tricks I've come across and, and I want to share those with you as well. Uh, if you haven't been there before, please check out my website at www.prairiedeveloper.com. I've had that website now for about 10 years and it's what kind of got me started on this whole path of sharing information and, and really learning the technology so I can share that with others. Uh, and it's, it's a way for me to, to, to give back because that's how I learned over the years and, and I want to pass that along to others as well. Now, let's get to what we're talking about today. Today we're going to be talking about uh, retention labels, which is the first video in my series on records management within Microsoft 365. We're going to be focusing on, again, you know, records management within Microsoft 365, but also within SharePoint Online. And the first topic, as I said before, is going to be record labels. Now, record label is there to help make sure your data stays where it needs to stay for as long as it needs to be there. So, for instance, you don't want your data to be deleted accidentally by users uh, before it should be. You know, things like how-to documents, policies, things like that. You want to make sure that's maintained. And that's what retention labels help you do. They make sure the data is there for as long as it needs to be, and also to help make sure it's removed when it needs to be as well. And that's the th main topic we're going to cover today. So let's get right to it. So today we're going to be working in the Compliance Console. To get there, we're going to start at the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Now just as a side note, we don't actually have to start here at the Admin Center. You can go directly to compliance.microsoft.com, but I usually start at the Admin Center as it's the best place to start for anything Microsoft 365. Now unless you customize your Admin Center, when you get to this page, you should see pretty much the same page that I have on the screen right now. To get to the Compliance Center, we're going to click on Show All. This brings up a list of the more important menu items. From there, we'll click on the Compliance item under Admin Centers. Okay, so now that we're here in the Compliance Center, you have two options available to you. The first of which is the Information Governance page. As you can see, on this page we can create labels and label policies, retention policies, and adaptive scopes, which are a topic for another time. You can also review existing policies, which is a topic for another day as well. Additionally, you can import PST files from your own servers into Microsoft 365 and archive existing mailboxes that are no longer being actively used. You can do all of this from the Information Governance page. The second place within the Compliance Console that we can create retention labels is the Records Management page. Something I feel I should mention here as it's fairly important is that the options available in the record management page are for organizations with E5 licenses or the E5 Information Protection and Governance add-on. This page is part of the Advanced Information Governance feature and is not available as an E3. Even if you have this option available in your tenant, you should not use it if you do not have the appropriate license or you may face fines from Microsoft upon usage reviews. The steps I'll be utilizing today will be the E5 license specific, but I'll release a similar video that covers an E3 license option as well uh, in the future. All right, now back to the page at hand. On this page, you can see we have the ability to get an overview of our retention labels being used within the organization. You'll see on my screen there isn't any information, but that's simply because this is a new tenant I created for these demos. As we progress in this series, more and more information is going to be populated. You can see, however, that on this page, I have I can view pending dispositions and label activity. Label activity highlights the labels being applied within my tenant. Additionally, we have the ability to review the file plan, and this is where we're going to create that label. We can also work with label policies, adaptive scopes, review of existing policies, we can create events, and we can deal with dispositions. You'll notice that retention policies are not listed on this page. And this is because retention policies are part of the E3 license and so are available within the information governance page. And again, I'll cover creating a retention policy in a future video. To create a retention label, we need to go to the File tab. So let's do that now. This page shows the existing labels and the properties. To create a label, simply click on Create a Label. On this screen, you have the basic label information, such as the name and the description. 
When users wish to select a label for their content, it's the name that shows up in the drop-down box. And I'll demonstrate that later. The description shows up as a tooltip or a pop-up when selecting a label. And again, I'll demonstrate later how that looks. You'll see that there's an option called Description for Admins. This does not become part of the tooltip, but instead is a way to provide administrators with the extra information they may need to support the label. Both the user and admin descriptions are optional, but I do suggest filling at least the user description in. To continue on, we simply need to fill in the name, but I'm also going to fill in a user description here as well. Once that's done, we'll click Next. Next we come to the file plan descriptors. Think of these as the metadata for the label. On this page, you can fill in such information as the ID of the label, the department that owns it or that it was built for, the category, and if necessary, a subcategory. Next, we have the authority type. This just determines if the label satisfies a business, legal, or regulatory need. Finally, we have provisions or citations. This is used to highlight any policies or legal documents that the retention label supports. Now this entire screen is optional. You don't have to fill anything in. However, I would like to make sure you are aware that in all cases, the reference ID is unique. You can't have two labels with the same ID. If you make a mistake on a label and attempt to recreate it, you have to wait for the system to fully delete the label, which can take multiple days to complete before recreating that label. So make sure all of your labels are carefully planned out. For this label, I'm just going to fill in the descriptor and the department. And notice when I select choose to select a department, I actually have the option to create a new one. I'm not going to do that today, but just wanted you to be aware that it is a possibility. In fact, it's possible to add options to each of the fields on this page. Today I'm just going to select information technology. Once you have selected the relevant descriptors, click Next to continue. And now we've come to the important page, the Retention Label Configuration page. I'll quickly describe each option so you can decide the correct one for your organization when you create your labels. The first option is Retain Items for Specific Period. This is exactly as it sounds. The intent here is to determine how long your organization needs to maintain a document that has this label applied to it. Next, you can determine what you want to do while the document is within this period. You can maintain the document and ensure it isn't deleted, or you can mark it as a record, which ensures that version is locked from editing and can't be changed. Just a little caveat here, you can still edit documents created as a record, but it takes a bit more, and I'll cover that another day. Next, we need to determine what we want to do after the retention schedule is complete. I'm actually going to describe the second option first, the disposition review. A disposition review is exactly as it sounds. It ensures at least one approved user reviews and confirms the document is ready for disposition. Another option is to delete the item automatically. No disposition review occurs in this case. The document is just moved to recycle bin for deletion. The final option is do nothing. The item is used if you simply want to ensure the document is not removed during the retention period. With this option selected, the onus is put back on your users to delete. The next major configuration option is retain items forever. This option is exactly as it sounds. With this configuration, your content will be maintained indefinitely. Did you know that a retention label can also be a deletion label? I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but that's actually the purpose of the next option. The idea behind this option is to allow your users to delete the item if they feel necessary. But if it still exists after the retention period, Microsoft 365 will ensure it is removed. If the document has already been removed, nothing will occur. The final option, don't retain or delete items, simply turns the retention label into another form of metadata for the document. All right, let's continue on. I'm going to create a standard label that removes our content in five days. To do this, I update the retention period to custom and set the value. Next, I can select the trigger for our label. The options available are based on when the document is created, when the document is last modified, when the item has the label applied. 
This option begins the countdown when the label is set on the file irregardless of the created or modified dates. The final option is based on an event. I'll cover that in a future video. For this label, I'll base it on when the document was created. I'm also going to want to disposition review, so I'll click on that too. To move on, click next. A disposition review can have up to five stages. This means that you can have up to five levels of approvals before a document actually gets removed. Think of it this way. You want a subject matter expert to determine if the document is still being used before it's actually removed. And maybe your business requires that the content owner, usually a manager director, needs to review all content for removal. Finally, your record manager needs to ensure all policies are being covered when deleting the content. So you end up with a three-stage disposition. In this case, I'm only going to create a single disposition stage. To do this, I click on Add Stage. I then give the stage a name. Next, I need to determine who is the approver. You can add multiple people manually, but if you needed to update it, you would have to change the label configuration each time, and that is not ideal. I suggest you utilize a mail enable group. This allows you to modify the approvers without having to update the label each time. I have a mail enabled group that holds my record managers called disposition reviewers. Let's add that. Click next. Finally, we can review our settings. Once we have reviewed, let's click create label. And there, we can see our label has been created. You have a number of options here, but I'm going to click on do nothing because there's a bit more I want to discuss. Now that we're back on the file plan tab, you'll see our newly created labels listed. However, note that the status is inactive. I'll demonstrate how to activate it and why it's inactive in my next video. The link will be in the description below. Thanks for watching.